good afternoon, guys. This is Joyce, Joyce All Knowing Tarot. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Sunday. This is uh, my last uh, day of my enhanced tarot class. I'm very excited. Had a wonderful group of people. Uh, most were really committed to learning the, I always call it an an art and a science of tarot, the language of tarot. It is a language, you know, like when you, you're in school and you first have to learn your ABCs and then you start knowing words like the and is and can and then you start with uh, bigger words and sentences and so they've literally come along like that. So I'm very uh, thrilled that things work out for them. Um, I hope you watched Johnny and I yesterday. I, I always say this. I really enjoy working with Johnny. He's a great tarot reader. He's a very humorous uh, individual. Great energy. You know, sometimes, I say this all the time, you work with people and for whatever reason, it's never a forced energy. The energy is just natural. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to show it to you in cards. Um, and... Have you ever heard of being the chosen ones? Now, I'm not talking about from, uh, you know, Jewish people or Israelites. I'm not talking about that from the biblical standpoint. But some people are chosen, okay, to wake up in this world, to be that light worker, that star seed. And it, it's no time. It's not when you have when you were young. It's not. It's any time that you awaken and you realize, oh, my gosh, I got a purpose here on Earth. And so let me tell you a little bit about it. And I laid out some cards before we came on and I'm going to show you in cards um, what it takes to be a chosen one. Um, so what is a chosen one? And let me just tell you some things that, that will probably indicate if you are. First of all, were you the black sheep in your family? Oftentimes, you're the only one that can really see your family. You know, you can see the good, the bad, the honesty, the dishonesty. You're able to see more things. Let me shift this over some. You're able to see into the family in a way everyone else can, can not. I mean, um, another thing, um, you're talked about a lot. You're talked about in a lot of places before you even step in the room. You're talked about a lot. You have a lot of haters. You know, you are just being you, your fabulous self, your whatever self you are. And you find people will find a reason not to like you. They'll just find any reason not to like you. They'll make it up even. Um, you have a light that will attract people to you that are not I'm going to say not well, or they feel they don't have the light. There's the people that always, they want to cling on to you or they want to, you know, maybe copy your style or uh, they want to, you know, control you in some kind of way or tell you what's best for you. Uh, those people, you know, every time you're trying to take a minute rest, they are on the phone or they're texting you or emailing you or something. You have those people. Um you're breaking family cycles. Maybe your family used to do this a lot and you are the person that does it. I'm going to be honest and tell you that my family on my father's side, they were drinkers. I mean, they really were drinkers. Um, for myself, mm -mm, you know, and it's not that I don't. I may have a drink here and there, but I just don't get into all of that. That is a cycle that is broken in my family. And no one that I, in my family does that. Um you might find that you change a lot of relationships. Uh, I'm talking about intimate relationships. They may come and go. You might change, have changed a lot of jobs. Now, a lot is subjective. You know, whatever a lot is to you. Some people, one job is a lot. Some 10 jobs are a lot. But you change jobs. Uh, and also, you could have people, a lot of people that come through your life. They come for a short time and then they move on. You used to be so close and then they move on. Um, yeah, uh, if any of those things and more, you are a chosen one. Uh, one of the things that I have is, is things with sleep. Like if you wake up anytime between like three and five and that's your regular thing, whether you go into the bathroom or whatever, 
you are a chosen one or you find your taste for things are not the same as they used to be or the TV shows or whatever program you're not interested so much anymore. You have been chosen. And I'm going to tell you this for the most of you that are here listening to this video when you could be listening to anything today about Trump or or Biden or anybody else. Um, you're chosen. This message is for you. Um, so let's look at, um, for example, you can't keep a job, something like that. So you get the job, you get there and everything else, and it's just not for you. And the reason you even have many jobs is because you needed to, um, have different experiences in your life so that you could relate to other people. Okay. Um, you needed to be in different situations so that you could let them know that, you know what, don't worry, this is going to work out too. Um, you go in that job with the best intentions, but then there's a part of you as a chosen one that you rebel authority. Now you see, you know, how people are really working. You could see that this, this supervisor, manager, boss, whoever principals in my case, um, they don't know as much as they try to pretend they do. And you find that most people don't question it, but you do. You are there to really fix the situation. You see, this is a situation that is out of control and you are working to fix it. However, you are someone who will get a lot of pushback because people are looking at you as a troublemaker. Why? Because you are trying to disturb the status quo. A lot of people want to be in a job where all they do is push papers all day. They don't want to really do the work. They want to dump it on other people. Or maybe in my in working in education, you have people that uh, cannot control their class. They have no classroom management. And they're in there trying to teach at the board. And they're yelling over, you know, 30 kids. But they're okay. They'll stay there a long time. Why? The money, the routine. But here you come as this person that's saying that I, I want to fix this. You can see all the problems that are going, all the cracks in the foundation. And you're sort of racing around trying to fix everything. And they look at you as the trouble person. And it drains your spirit. It drains the energy out of you. And then you move on. That's the same thing in uh, relationships, whether it's intimate relationship or relationship with friends. It starts off all fun and good. You have some things in common. And then you find that every time they're in touch with you, they're talking more than you. You're sort of just holding the receiver on the phone or whatever with, uh-huh, mm, okay. You know, all that's all you're doing. They don't even know that, you know, they're so invested in themselves that they don't even know they have not made a room for you to open up and speak in. You know, then you're um, hearing all their problems. You're trying to fix it. You're trying to give them suggestions, positive suggestions or uh, spiritual suggestions or things that have worked for you. <clears throat> they always say they're going to do that. And then they don't do that. It's easier for them to call back and suck it from you, suck that energy from you, whether it's intimate or friendships. They're not really your friend. And then when you when you draw the line and you say, no, you can't call me every day with problems about that or no that's not a conversation that I'm interested in or hey why don't we go to this yoga class or why don't we go to this uh breathing class or whatever all of a sudden they start backing up and they're telling you well we don't really connect or we don't really we're not really friends and you're like what oh, okay they come and they go. They come and they go because they see the light in you. They think that you have something that they don't have. The truth is we all have it, but everybody is not chosen. Please hear what I'm saying. Everyone is not a chosen person and you know if you are chosen. And so I thought I would show you in the cards. This is so fantastic. Uh, the first card, the first energy I have is the Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords is you. That's you walking away. This, these, this is all the distractions of your life, other people or bills or jobs or this or that. You're walking away. You're willing to say, I'm going to let my ego self go, go. I'm going to refresh and renew myself and I'm going to be like reborn again. This is a 10. So that means that I'm going up on another level. But as you can see, she's in the desert and she's walking alone. That is telling you that awakening is a lonely journey. It's a lonely journey. 
I may not get anybody to even watch this video, but at least I'm sharing with you. It's a lonely journey. Um, you spend a lot of time thinking and meditating with yourself. This is the queen of swords. This is seeking clarity in your own mind. You are trying to make your own decisions. You're trying to find forgiveness of self and others. You're trying to seek a level of atonement for things that happen in your life. It's something that you can do yourself. She's not talking to anyone. She's sitting by herself. She's contemplating not her next move. That's that's capitalism. OK, that's not Aquarian energy at all. She's contemplating her soul growth, her spiritual growth, her journey. Then you have the six of pentacles. Six of pentacles says that I'm going to do whatever I'm doing for the people. I'm sharing my knowledge. I'm sharing my wisdom. I'm sharing my love. I'm sharing my energy, even if it's financial with others. You understand now that there is a give and a take that you can't just uh, expect people to give you, give you, give you. You also realize that you just can't give, give, give. You don't give until your cup is full. When anything that falls over, that's when you share your resources, your wisdom, your spirituality. Another thing you do, Three of Pentacles, is you work with people. You work with people who are like-minded, but you're working on, they're creating. You're working with people who are like-minded. They are drawn to you as well, and you're working on yourself. You're working and learning how to ex expand your horizons, expand your mind, think in bigger ways, think in loving ways, think in forgiving ways, coming together. And you know, you sit in your place of uh, your place of wisdom. Sevens are always about spirituality. And your seven of wands says that she is full of energy in her spirituality. I know it's a hard card to see with the light. But you see, she's sitting in that light. That is your your light, your energy that's coming out you, through you, around you. And yes, you will have distractors. You're going to always have distractors that are going to say that they don't like your, your message or they're not interested in that type of conversation or they still want to talk about next door neighbor Betty and her affair with Tom down the street or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever mess that's not important. And that could be also easy as... Uh, bills or your kids, grandkids, um, any of those things can be distractions from you. But what you do is you carve out time for you so that you can bless you more. So being a chosen one is real. It does not mean that you are better than anybody else. It doesn't. It just means that you have realized, oh my goodness, you've, you've woken up from this slumber, this sleep called life here on earth is 3d level. And you said, oh my goodness, I got a purpose here. I got, I don't have no time to waste. And that is why I'm stepping out on my faith to say, I got a purpose. And I know that somebody out there has got a purpose too. And somebody's going to hear this and realize I'm waking up too. My mouth is dry, but they're going to say, I'm waking up too. And I got a purpose and I'm going to start moving in my purpose. And your purpose does not mean that you got to have a big mega church or you got to be a Marianne Williamson. It could be something small that you show kindness and forgiveness to the people in your family or just to yourself that you take it easy on yourself. Cause I know I can be so hard on myself striving for perfection and wondering what people think and all of that. But that stuff begins to shift away. You don't need that. You don't need it anymore. You are perfect to begin with. You are wonderful to begin with. I hope you enjoyed this message. It's just a nice little Sunday thought I wanted to share with those that are the chosen ones. Those are ones that are waking up that, hey, I'm with you. I got your back. We belong to each other and we're going to make our way through this. And I will be back and I will be speaking on more spiritual things because you know what? It just is so clear. Like Johnny was saying yesterday, this is my channel. And if that's what I want to speak on, that's what I'm going to speak on. And I was like that anyways, but I loved his, you know, just sort of confirmation of that. It's always good to have people that are in alignment with you. Um, I will remind you again that Linda, she won't be here. Linda G invited me over to her channel. So I'll be on her channel. That's tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So figure out your time from there and come over and check me out. I love to see you guys. Have a great day. Bye now.